way. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. The sun is shining, come on, get happy. The Lord is waiting to take Welcome back to Real Pride, part two. Uh, I am Jeffrey Lightman. And I'm Patrick McDonald of HollywoodChicago.com. And we would like to continue our segment with two more gay and lesbian related films. Uh, the first film we are going to discuss is Desert Hearts from yes. 1985. And we don't forget the girls. Uh, Desert Hearts is considered, uh, Jeffrey, um, one of the first widely released mainstream films about lesbian uh, lovers. Correct. Uh, not exploitative in the least. Um, somewhat uh, similar to The Boys in the Band in 1969 for uh, gay men. So basically, this is a film about, uh, it's set in 1959, right. um, Reno, in Nevada. Reno, Reno, Nevada, where uh, women would go to uh, get divorces, because Reno had a six-week waiting period to get a divorce. And Helen Shaver plays Vivian, a uh, Eastern college professor who is coming to do just that, get divorced from her husband. And uh, she is staying at a ranch run by uh, Francis, who is uh, Audra Lindley, Mrs. Roper from uh, from uh, Three's, Three's Company, and then later the Ropers. Yes, there was a lot of Three's Company in this picture. Yes, <laughs> She's staying on the ranch, and she meets Kay Patricia Charbonneau, who is an artist in residence on the ranch, and. Uh, their friendship leads to a possible affair. Correct. Okay. A romance, if you will. Yes, a romance. Mm -hmm. um, I really think that this uh, stands at the very pinnacle yes. of lesbian films. But I think that this film, more so than any that we've discussed yes. uh, in this segment, really deals with the confusion of discovering your sexual orientation and, and coming to terms with it. Huh. I don't think any of the other films deal with it at all. Okay. And I really think the big... You're saying cruising doesn't. No. <laughs> uh, um, I didn't like it as much as you did. I, I felt that um, the time they set it in was a little awkward. I, I saw a lot of anachronisms. They, obviously, it's a low-budget picture. It's very hard to do, period, when you're doing a low-budget picture. And I just felt like it, it just wasn't there. I didn't feel 1959. Uh, for the sake of the screenplay, their, their romance blossomed. But in the sake of a natural flow to how people come together, how they relate. I mean, what Vivian was doing was fairly scary for 1959 as far as having a romance with another woman. I mean, she was a mature intellectual, but Correct. still, the nature of 1959 tells you that uh, I just couldn't believe it happened the way it happened, in my in my viewpoint. So, I, I did of, of the four films we watched, I thought this was the least. That's yeah, very interesting because of the four films, I think this is the strongest. Okay, your star rating, sir. I give Desert Hearts four stars. Wow, I give Desert Hearts two and a half. I that means I recommend it, but uh, just barely. Too bad. Okay, the fourth and final film that we're going to discuss is, has to do with a, a significant anniversary that is coming up. Uh, this year is the 40th anniversary of the Stonewall Inn riots, where uh, people say that the gay pride movement started, essentially, uh, because of those riots and uh, because of the liberation that was going on both in feminism and civil rights. Uh, gay rights uh, began with that lightning rod moment. And there was a film made called Stonewall and um, directed by Nigel Fitch. Well, the plot of this movie is small town boy comes to New York City. And um, that boy is named Maddie Dean. There you go. Played by Fred Weller. Mm -hmm. uh, comes to New York City, fresh off the bus, runs into a drag queen, La Miranda, played by Guillermo Diaz. Mm -hmm. um, 
befriends him. I guess they get jailed somehow, don't they? Is yes. That they need? They yes. In fact, they get jailed, uh, a raid at the Stonewall Correct. to show, you know, the, how in that time New York police regularly raided gay bars. Correct. Join me if you like. I don't do tears. Don't you ever get this angry? I don't do angry. That's all I do. And, and, and also, they, um, through Maddie Dean, they kind of show the pro progress of gay rights in the 60s in New York City. He joins an organization called Manachine which was an early organization that fought for gay rights, but they wanted to do it in a mainstream sense. Uh, they wanted to be in suit and ties and protest very quietly, but to show that, you know, homosexuals were mainstream in society. Correct. Right. So there was a lot of stuff going on here. We have, uh, we have the machine side of it showing like the mainstreaming of gay protests. We have the days leading up to the Stonewall in riots. We know they're going to happen in this movie. And we have a musical. <laughs> <laughs> musical segments, yes. yes. That act in a strange way, I guess, his intent was to, that he wanted the musical <laughs> segments to work as sort of a Greek chorus. Yes. I'm in love. You best believe I'm in love, L-U-V. Uh, the whole depiction of the drag queens in this film, I think, is uh, almost too broad, definitely. <laughs> 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 uh, I felt like he bit off way more than he could chew. Interesting. I mean, I respect the fact that he was trying to incorporate all of these, mm -hmm. you know, the machine right. and the, uh, the the drag queens and the mob. Um, I just felt like it was a very, very weak script that kind of rambled all over the place until we actually get to the riots themselves, which to me even came off as anticlimactic. Wow, I, again, I had the complete opposite reaction to this film. I thought he, he uh, maintained a balancing act. Uh, I think the intention of this film was to show both sides of the gay rights issue and to do that through some uh, examples of relationships that were going on at the time. There seemed to be a climatic buildup that allowed for the riots to really make a resonance with me. I did not mind the uh, musical numbers and the sequences. I thought they were uh, coy and kind of uh, fun, you know, kind of to break up the, uh, you know, the, the serious nature sometimes of, of, of the screenplay. And Stonewall is a symbolic event almost. We don't actually, even with eyewitnesses, we don't know what happened exactly that night. So basically what uh, Nigel was doing was presupposing a fantasy about it. Interesting. So my, my star rating for Stonewall, three and a half. My star rating for Stonewall is only two. Okay. So basically, uh, we recommend all four films. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they all have something degree. to offer to all of you. Yes. and. Uh, Thank you for watching a real pride and happy pride week. Happy Jeffrey. pride everyone. All right. Forget your troubles, come on get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on get happy. Get